What does it mean to trust? What does it mean for us to be in a position to trust something or someone? What does it do for our bodies to be able to rely upon something? And what does it do when we can't? Is there a way we can encourage greater amounts of trust within ourselves? Is this precisely what the study of life practices are for? Trust is earned, they say, and trust is earned, that's often true. But perhaps it's putting the cart before the horse to avoid trusting until we have enough of an established track record with someone or something that we can say with assurance that we trust them. And it's a fool's errand anyway. Because when we look more closely at our lives, we find far more often that we trust than we distrust every day. With this light, may we see the truth about things, at least as much as we can know, at least as much as will help us let down our guard a little. Let this flame symbolize our intention to be more open, more loving, and a greater instrument of trust and peace in this world. So mote it be. Remember the first person who trusted you with something expensive? You knew you didn't want to let them down. Their trust in you meant so much, you tried even harder to keep it. And remember that. Trust is something we often do by choice. We choose to entrust something to someone without 100% assurance of either safety or success. Of course, we don't always fully trust the people for whom we choose to demonstrate it. Letting your newly licensed child drive your car is a display of great trust, not always felt. <laughs> Sometimes we behave according to a level of confidence we do not fully know, but hope to. The word trust originates from an old Norse word for strong. We tend to have confidence in things which appear to be strong. Sometimes, however, things are not as they appear. Weakness can always hide beneath a thin veneer it's the inside which determines strength, not the out. Consider the inside of something 
when placing your trust in it. When faced with a dilemma, a person's character, their ethical inner scaffolding, always determines the choices they make, especially in times of stress and need. It is that part, the inner part, in which we place our trust. And be careful that the TV you're buying wasn't for display purposes only. Then there is the trust we place in others. Not just the people we know, it's the people we don't. People we might be afraid of, people whose customs confound us, their language challenges us, and their unknown purpose frightens us. Take the time to realize they are human, just like you. Imagine their feelings. Imagine how they might feel if you were to be welcoming of them when others are not. How much do you think they'd value your trust? When we cultivate a sense of belonging with others, we are inherently safer from them. Fences make better neighbors, perhaps, but walls only make better enemies. Choose trust. It will pay off more often than not. And for those who have a relationship with a higher power, what do you do with it? How much trust do you give it? How much do you withhold? It's about letting go, really. A lack of trust in our higher power, or in anything for that matter, is a missed opportunity for inner peace. Place your worries in the hands of something larger than yourself. That is trust. Choosing to believe that there is a purpose to the difficulties you're experiencing is trust. When you choose to believe in this kind of trust, your body downshifts from code red to code orange. A whole set of outer edge defense mechanisms switch off. Standing down a bit from high alert is one of the greatest benefits of having a relationship with a higher power and placing our trust in it. Make an assumption that all shall be well, and then behave as if it's already so. There is danger in the world, yes. There are thieves and liars and cheats, oh my. But I have known criminals whom I've trusted. My trust was valuable to them, and they generally didn't betray it. I was statistically safer just by being kind. Of course, others can betray our trust and often do, but remember again that feeling you had when someone first entrusted you with something precious, how much you wanted to prove yourself worthy of it. If you take a chance on someone and they know you're doing it with reservations perhaps, but still doing it, does it keep you safer? Does it enhance the likelihood of a positive outcome? I would say yes. I know my mother's car was safer, at least to a degree, because of my desire to keep her trust and to keep using her car. Trust others first, and those who betray you will be small in number compared to all those who will be honored by the respect and trust you've shown them. Likewise, trust in your higher power. Talk to it. Get to know it. Assume there is a greater purpose in all things and place your trust in that. Trust is not the answer to all problems. There is no panacea here. But if it increases, even by a little bit, the amount of time spent in your life not under the weight of stress, good. You'll live longer. When we are more relaxed about our concerns, the solutions come easier. Trust in yourself that you are clever enough to at least lighten your burdens, if not outright lift them. Live your life trusting others so that you have enough friends to help you with the solutions you can't pursue on your own. We are none of us an island. Trust may be all we have. Use it both generously and wisely. Be at ease now and breathe. Breathe in deeply. And as you exhale, allow worry and stress to drain from your body. Let it seep through the fibers of the carpet and between the floorboards to melt forever into the earth below. As you breathe, think now for a moment about someone or something you genuinely trust. It could be your car or your cousin, a friend or your mechanic, someone that you know will meet your expectations. Something that you know will start when you turn the key. Something about which you are not worried, but confident. 
Think of them now. And breathe. As you continue to breathe, notice the sensations of your trust. Notice what it feels like to take it for granted that the item you want will be in the store right where you expect it to be. Of course, we all know that sometimes things happen. But our trust is established over time and through repeated experiences where things typically land where they should. Memorize the feelings around trust, around confidence, around assurance, reliability, and promise. As we approach others during this difficult time, those whom we know well and those who are strangers, the statistical likelihood that they will not betray you or your trust is well in your favor. Remember that. There is far more love in the world than hate. There are far more trustworthy people in the world than those who would betray us. It is statistically true even if we cannot sometimes perceive it. And breathe. Give thanks for those who are trustworthy. Give thanks for things which can be counted upon. Give thanks for genuine friendship. Give thanks for the light that always turns on when you open the refrigerator. Give thanks for doctors and for nurses and for scientists and for all those who support them in the mission of your health. There is trustworthiness to be found here. Recognize and value every single instance of trust you exhibit. Take the time to notice them. Trust in small things like refrigerator lights and big things like marriages. And breathe. Even though there will be times when your trust is betrayed, they will be so far outnumbered by the times that trusting first has saved you, healed you, comforted you. Have trust in that. For those who consider themselves untrusting, Remember how often you place your trust in others without even realizing it. Remember that you are both trusting and trustworthy. Take one final breath and return. <laughs> 